to another night of hometown highlights, the hardwood edition, of course, and it's night two of rivalry week in Traverse City. Last night, it was the boys' turn. The Titans defeated the Trojans by 10, final 58 to 48. Tonight, a chance for redemption for the Lady Trojans to even the score in their visit to TC West's home gym. So let's check it out together, shall we? Here are some of the sights and sounds. A very special start. Always a big time atmosphere. Girls, guys, football, basketball, hockey, whenever you get these two teams in an arena together. Right away, Titans starting off pretty well, breaking the ice. Kelsey Belinsky nabs the ball, feeds it to Emily Thomas for the first drop in the bucket. Thomas again going strong for West in the first period, sneaking another basket to lead into the second. Erica Erickson, great shot from the crowd. She must have bought popcorn too when she was watching this one. 12 to 8. Titans, but back with a vengeance east. Uh, we're going to check in. Tyler Rawlings drops one in now, 17 to 10. TC West now demands the ball once again with a quick pass. Paris Wagner drops it in for a two pointer. The Trojans, though, they come back. Check out this two pointer here from Mandy Banky, forcing it in, getting past the defender, banking it off the glass. And Banky on a roll. Check her out scoring again. She knows right where to put it on that glass, folks. She's done this before, maybe in the backyard once or twice. Titans go on to win 35 to 32. Well, let's stay in Traverse City for more girls action. 8 1 St. Francis hosting Lake Michigan Police Jordan for a doubleheader tonight. Girls action in the third. Jasmine Steinoff gets the rebound after group passing and scores here. Then Liza Erickson feeds Caitlin Feeney down low, and Feeney knows what to do. We're going to go ahead and check out East Jordan. Now Valerie Peters drives, hits the shot. Beautiful spin move there. Then Erickson again hits the cross over layup. Erica's getting confused. She's in the studio watching this round. This is Liza Erickson playing on the floor. Then Brian Newberry finds Allie Sutton for the Red Devils. Nice little pass there. Gets the open six-footer. Beautiful bunny jumper. Glads, though, they go on to win 51-27. Well, the Blazers and Elks continued their rivalry in Kalkaska County tonight. A boy-girl doubleheader. Here are the girls first. Early on, some misses for the Blazers, but check this out. Kelly Guy, she's number four. She's scrambling for the loose ball and makes her way in. Dodges around all the Elk defenders and puts it in, making it look easy. Later on, Rachel Hintz goes to the bucket, gets the basket to bounce making it look easy. Uh, excuse me, I jumped ahead there. This is Rachel Hintz for the Elks. Here she is getting the work done down low and she draws the foul. The previous play for Kalkaska, that would have been Taylor Berge, but that was Hintz for the Elks. Now back to the Blazers' possession. Tabitha Kibbe, corner three there, spots it up. And once again, when you need a for sure bucket for the Blazers, they go to Kelly Guy once again, and she makes things happen from long range. She had 26 in this one, and the Lady Blazers going to win. Final 61 to 22. And Forest Area Student Section going wild and crazy like a bunch of kids that they are. The Warriors Student Section, very happy to do the wave for us this evening. Warriors hosting Gaylord St. Mary. Excuse me, that's incredible. We're going to Forest Area at, or hosting Gaylord St. Mary. And uh, St. Mary's opponent, uh, they're a very good, 8 2 record. But uh, Caitlin Johns right there for the Warriors. She's you know, trying to keep this one close. It's a big time three there. Right back on the other end, though, it's Carrie Borowiak. Catches the defense sleeping, and she's going to waltz right in the front door in the paint and get that easy lay-in. Back come the Warriors, though. Danielle John, well, excuse me, we're going to keep going with the Snowbirds. Another easy lay-in, but here come the Warriors back in this one. Caitlin John, her sister, no doubt these two are related. That's Danielle John then spots up from three. St. Mary's goes on to win this one, though. Keeps their impressive starting tack, 72-23. All right, welcome back to Hometown Highlights. We've seen a little bit, now we've got a whole lot more, and we're going to start this segment off with the matchup of the week in the Big North Conference featuring the Alpena boys basketball team traveling to Petoskey and the Northmen. They're pretty impressive this year, off to an 8-0 and start. Let's show you these impressive highlights. The band getting us going early on, very in tune and ready to go. Petoskey guards, though, they're ready to go as well. They work the ball on this play eventually. Get it to Joe LeBlanc and he'll get the easy points in the post. LeBlanc then will get the assist on the next play when he gets it to the post to Shea Whitmore. Look at Whitmore, wide open down low. Gets an easy score to go. Alpina on the other end, Wildcats try to come back. Tyler Pinter maneuvers through the defense on this one and put it up for the score. Alpina again, Jacob Kinzorski finds Luke Kords and he'll fight off the defender to put this mid-range jumper in the air. I think I saw it hit nylon, so that bucket's good. But Petoskey would be too much for Alpina. Quinn Emil finds Shea Whitmore again, wide open for the runaway points. Fans go wild, Northman win, keep their undefeated streak going. 
Well, let's move on to 10-0 TC St. Francis going up against East Jordan again in the boys' side. We start off in the third with a pass from Connor Sick to Dan Weber. Big time three-pointer there. Crowd loving every second of that one. East Jordan gets the ball again. And out of nowhere, Dustin Hedgka swoops in, drops one into the bucket. This one ends our third period of action. We go to the all-important fourth. Gladiator showing no mercy. A pass to Kyle White, and he scores. And they continue to dominate again. A quick pass from six foot seven Cody Kleinreich. That's a big fella. Certainly wouldn't want to see him on the floor anywhere. Easily drops that one in. But later, a quick steal from East Jordan. Noah Backus moves coast to coast making it rain, every sort of basketball cliche in the book, but the Glads take this one over East Jordan. They win impressive fashion, 85 to 45. They remain undefeated 11 and 0. Well, check out the student section debate in Kalkaska. The Hunters of the Elks versus the superheroes and the blue team of the Blue Blazers. You decide for yourselves. No mascots though, I was disappointed. Didn't get to see the, the little blazer or the little elk. Adam Trotman, corner three, gets the Elks going here and my Distant relative, I believe, Austin McMullen with a turnaround jumper here. Always proud to see Austin score in some impressive fashion. Elks out to a 5-0 start, and then it's going to get even farther of a deficit. Freshman Shaden, uh, excuse me, Shaden Summers hits a corner three. Elks go up 8-1 to one to start. Caleb Jelenis, though, gets the Blazers back with a corner three. That one looks good, and Jelenis again showing he's not a one-trick pony. He can drive just like the best of them. Look, diving through the defenders. Impressive score there, but the Elks men's side were just too much to handle on this one the blazers won the girls matchup the elks take the guys matchup they win 58 to 46. charlotte boys raider mascot look at that guy he's a uh, i don't know how to describe him he's a pirate what about pirates of the caribbean maybe that was johnny depp harbor springs nick vandermoos gets the drive and gets it out to trevor romore and nails the big three then charlotte boys tanner cott will find sawyer russell and he will look one way spin around make the mid-range jumper look easy Harbor Springs throws the ball to the wrong team on this one though, and Charlevoix will capitalize. Shane Sutherland will run away with this one for the easy lay in. Then Harbor Springs again tries to catch up with this late three, but Nick Vandermus delivers the three, but the Raiders will be too much for the Rams. They go on to take this one, and the fans loving that as well.